Distinguished guests, the Vice President of the United States. Washington, D.C. So while we are gathered here, I do want to take a moment to address the many Californians who have been impacted by the extreme weather that um, has hit the state. They and our very courageous first responders are in our thoughts and in our prayers, and I've been in constant contact with California state leaders and the president will have more to say about our administration's response, but they are very much those Californians in our mind. And now, I will talk about our beloved warriors. So as a very proud daughter of Oakland, California, <laughs> It gives me immense personal pride as the Vice President of the United States to say, Dub Nation is in the house. <laughs> my family and my Bay Area friends are among the many who are gathered here to congratulate our Golden State Warriors the 2022 NBA champions. So on a personal note, I have been a Warriors fan my entire life. And this team has been a constant source of joy and pride for me and for so many of us. Doug and I, the first second gentleman of the United States, together with our family who are here, have watched this team on television and in person. I have a fond memory of a particular playoff game in Oakland at Oracle. So we were headed to the game, but stuck in standstill traffic. And we were worried that we were gonna miss the tip off. Now I was Attorney General of California at the time, and to the dismay of my security detail, I decided to jump out the car <laughs> and take Bart instead. <laughs> and got on a jam-packed train with all the other fans. We got to the game on time, and yes, the Warriors did win. It was a glorious day, and I even caught my Lakers fan husband cheering them on. <laughs> Six years later, after President Biden and I were elected, the Warriors presented me with a jersey with the number 49 to commemorate my number as vice president. It still hangs next to our treadmill at home. <laughs> and as many of you may know, I work out every morning. So every morning, I look at that jersey, a symbol of grit, determination, and teamwork. My pride in the Warriors today is not only because they win, but because these players, their coaches, and this entire organization consistently stand for the principles of equity, equality, and justice. which they do with great integrity and excellence. So for all of this, I congratulate our warriors, and it is now my great honor to introduce two people who embody and live by these important principles. 
One of them is a two-time MVP and a four-time NBA champion. The other is the champion of our nation. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Please welcome Steph Curry and the President of the United States, Joe Biden. tempted to say is honors them to be here speaking. Now, I'm not sure I wouldn't be more excited if I was standing back there. <laughs> Kamala, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> feels like a war or home game. And uh, the toughest ticket in town. And this has been a tough ticket to get in town. Nancy Pelosi, where are you, Nance? Nancy. <laughs> Greatest speaker in our history, and this is her home court right here. <laughs> Folks, it's so wonderful to be here. Paul, good to see you, Paul. <laughs> There's several other members of the California delegation here are also here, along with several city and state leaders. But as Kamala said, we're, uh, we're all closely monitoring the storms, the floods, the landslides all across California. And our heart is with all of the families, all the families in the communities that are hurting, and all the brave and historic and heroic first responders. Working closely with Governor Newsom, I'm in constant contact with, and the entire delegation, I issued a disaster declaration to support recovery and to rebuild. And I'll be traveling to California on Thursday to assess the damage and see uh, what additional support may be needed. Difficult moments like this remind us that uh, we are one America. We're one America. And folks, I know the team we're honoring today understands what it takes to work together. Let me just say that uh, the Golden State Warriors are always welcome in this White House. Always welcome. <laughs> No more droughts. <laughs> I mean, in California. And congratulations to Team Loader. Peter and Joe, uh, congratulations to the staff and coaches and fans, and most especially to the incredible players standing behind me. Today, the Golden State Warriors are known as one of the most successful franchises in basketball and all of sport. And four NBA titles, six finals, and in the last eight seasons. That ain't bad, man. <laughs> that ain't bad. The stat line of a dynasty. But uh, the last couple of years are pretty tough. We struggled in 2020, missed the playoffs in 21, and critics wondered if this team was gone for good as a championship team. But, fellas, I know what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. As my dad used to say, Joe, get up. Just get up and never give up. But you never gave up. And you always believed. Coached by one of the greats, a man of courage and humility, five rings as a player, four as a coach, Steve Kerr. Yeah. He's run out of fingers. You all see the size of those rings? He had to walk along like this. Well, I tell you what. 
and one of the best executives for us, Bob Myers, to rebuild. And reimagine the team around the big three, Steph, Draymond, and, uh, and Kai. Well, you guys are so incredible. I mean, you add up to 72 feet. Um, <laughs> you're amazing. I swear to God, you're incredible. <laughs> Worked like hell to come back after missing uh, two and a half seasons and in injuries. You brought Andre and you signed another group of up and coming stars. In 2022, you showed what you're all about heart and hustle finishing near the top of the Western Conference at the end of the regular season, in the playoffs, defeating Denver, Memphis, and Dallas, and in the finals, beating the Boston Celtics for the Warriors' seventh title in franchise history. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> Steph, earning your first finals MVP award. Finals, that's not bad, man. <laughs> How's it feel compared to all those other MVPs? <laughs> it's the best one. The best one? All right. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it goes to this two regular season MVP awards, including the first unanimous MVP in NBA history. <laughs> and cementing his place in history among the best ever. You know, and they don't do it with a style of play that does anything other than reflect America. Constant motion with individual freedom and personality that comes together as one team. A team that plays with joy, with drive, to be their best, and reflects the vibrancy of the Bay and the culture of our country. And no wonder, it's no wonder why millions of people at home and around the world stop and watch you play. And that's true. Wherever they can tune in, they watch. You entertain, and above all, you do something that I don't even think you guys think about a lot. You inspire. You inspire, unrelated to basketball. You just inspire. And let me close with this. On Sunday, it would have been Dr. King's 94th birthday. I believe I had the great honor of being the first sitting president to deliver a sermon at Sunday service that uh, at his cherished Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Fellas, We've been on some big stages, but that was something special and humbling for me. You could feel his spirit. You literally could feel his spirit, at least I could. His, his moral vision of a beloved community, where, uh, where we uh, move forward, and we move forward together. It's exactly 60 years ago this month when President Kennedy hosted the Boston Celtics of the first NBA championship team to visit the White House. A few months later in August, the Celtic legend Bill Russell's returned to Washington, this time to stand at the Lincoln Memorial to hear Dr. King deliver his I Have a Dream speech. I know this is the first season without Mr. Russell since his passing last year, and we miss him. But we know that all of you carry forward the through line of greatness and service that he and Dr. King represented. It's fitting we continue the tradition to host the day after Dr. King's holiday. Look at what this team does, speaking out against racism, standing up for equality. I mean, speaking out loudly against racism, standing up for equality, encouraging people to vote, empowering children and their families to eat healthy, learn and play in safe places, rallying the country against gun violence. And coach, I want to thank you again. Dad was a great man and president of Beirut University and so much more, but he was a victim of gun violence. But it matters. We always believe that America can be summed up, I believe, in a single word. I was asked by Xi Jinping on the Tibetan Plateau some years ago. He said, can you define America for me? And it's the God's truth. And I said, yes, in one word, possibilities, possibilities. Each of you, individually and together as a team, prove that anything is possible if we do it together. There's nothing beyond the capacity of this country if we work together. Nothing. I really mean it. Believe that with my whole heart and soul. 
Our national motto is e, plurib e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Well, you put the dub nation in that place. <laughs> Strength in numbers. That's the warrior spirit. That's also America. And now it's my honor to introduce someone I really admire, not just as a player, but as a person. We all know the state line of championships and MVPs. We see the highlight reels, one of the sharpest shooters to ever play the game. But when you watch Steph Curry play, you can also see a man of character who puts in the work, who walks his faith, who loves his family, and brings people together as one of the great sportsmen of our time. And besides that, he, the only thing he and I really have in common, we both married way above our station. <laughs> way above our station. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Seth Curry. Uh, thank you for that, President Biden. Vice President Harris, entire White House, White House staff, thank y'all for uh, welcoming us here, the entire Warriors organization, every teammate I have, every coach, uh, front office, executive, staff, everybody that's here celebrating with us. Um, we are a team, we do it together, and to be able to celebrate our championship together with you here, it means a lot to bring that trophy here. Um, it means a lot. I think we were here seven years ago um, for our first championship. So to, uh, to have another opportunity to be here means, means the world. Um, we had a connection, obviously, with your former boss, President Obama, with his Chicago ties and watching Coach Kerr and celebrating championships there. But there is a connection to you. Uh, I know you uh, grew up in Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania, and that's two hours away from Philly, which is uh, where the Warriors organization began. Uh, and in 1946, we won our first championship. Um, so we, 46 has a nice ring within, <laughs> with you as a 46 president. Um, so that is a, a great connection there. And then obviously Vice President Harris, uh, representing Oakland, representing the Bay Area, the way that we do every time we step foot in the court, which we'll be able to do here in DC means, means the world. So you are, uh, our, I know a huge fan and you're loud with it too. And we, we love that. So we appreciate you, uh, keep doing, no, that's the yeah. Yeah. We, we love that, love that spirit, and we want to continue to make you proud with everything that we do. Um, and uh, again, for us to be here to uh, find the, the the common synergies within you know what we do on the court and what we represent, and uh, when it comes to providing hope, inspiration, uh, belief uh, to everybody that watches us play, that's what you do in, in your roles uh, leading our country. And um, to continue to do exactly what you said, uh, do things together. Uh, continue to preach that message. That's that's what we're all about, and, and obviously in the pursuit of, of winning championships and doing amazing things. Uh, we, we brought some gifts for you. Uh, we have two jerseys, uh, a number 46 and a number 49, that we would love to have you a part of Dub Nation forever, and uh, um, maybe find it maybe on the wall in the Oval Office. Or in the office. <laughs> that would be, uh, we'll come back. Hopefully we'll be able to come back and check and see if it's up there. But. Uh, <laughs> I want to say again, thank you for letting us uh, be here to celebrate and for our families, our staff, everybody here on the, on the stage. It means the world. And uh, hopefully this isn't the last time. So thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 